Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson, and today is Monday, September 7th, 2020. Today I'm going to be discussing recent developments in the COVID-19 vaccine and an important article uh, by a Yale professor, physician, and scientist in a recent issue of The Economist. Now, the question of interest is, will we have a vaccine by election day? President Trump today in his Labor Day press conference uh, indicated that there will be an October surprise. And he uh, hinted that we will have a vaccine sometime next month. Now this is in sharp contrast to statements by the head of Operation Warp Speed, Dr. Monsef Slawi, PhD, by the way, who says, although not impossible, don't count on it. And Dr. Slowey promises to quit if political pressures get in the way of rigorous science. Now that's the head of Operation Warp Speed. Now this comes after Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar said that the government's new November 1st deadline to have vaccine distribution systems in place has nothing to do with elections. Now, another highly unusual and interesting development is that some major U.S. pharmaceutical firms who just happen to be working on clinical trials for the new COVID-19 vaccine, uh, those are Pfizer and Johnson and & Johnson and Moderna, three highly reputable pharmaceutical companies. And again, they are developing COVID-19 vaccines and in various phases of these phase three clinical trials. They plan to issue a public pledge not to seek government approval until the vaccine has been proven to be safe and effective. And again, this is unusual, uh, a joint move among rivals that have to do with announcing that they're not going to release a vaccine until it's safe. You know, the public has been very concerned over a rush to develop this vaccine and mass vaccination. So these companies, uh, their statement is still being finalized, but they have stated that they make, they plan to pledge to adhere to high scientific and ethical standards in the conduct of clinical studies and in the manufacturing process. So more to come. Now I'm gonna to switch to a different topic. There was a great article on this pandemic and a special issue of The Economist, and I'm going to reference that. Nicholas Christakis, who's a MD, PhD, he's got a master's in public health, he's a professor, He's a physician, he's a sociologist. He wrote this great article, which is really um, technical, but there are some good points that even a non-epidemiologist could follow. So I wanna share some of these key takeaways. And some of this we already know, but it's worth reinforcing since people have COVID-19 complacency. So COVID-19 patients take about seven days from infection to show symptoms. But remember they can spread the disease for two to four days before they are symptomatic. In fact, the one to two days before symptoms may be when they are most contagious, according to this article. And there is a huge number of infected people who show no symptoms but are contagious. The article also makes the point that since we cannot rely on symptoms to identify cases, testing needs to be widespread and the results return rapidly, if not immediately. So the virus, they say, is so inconsistent in whom it infects, harms, and kills. And the extreme contagiousness of this virus 
means that it will infect a large percentage of the world before the pandemic has run its course. So the article says that although some people resist face masks, perhaps they will come to see that face masks are better than closing the economy or counting body bags. And the article also states, after all, a thin cotton swab shoved up your nostril beats a plastic tube jammed down your trachea. That's interesting, isn't it? I'll have to remember those words. So they concluded in this article that for COVID-19, at least 40% of the world's 7.6 billion people will probably become infected with millions of deaths. That's because of the contagiousness of this virus. Now, I did the math to see what 40% of 7 billion, 7.6 billion was. So here's the answer. You take the numbers 304 and you put seven zeros behind it and you get 3.04 billion people that's a lot of people that they predict are going to get infected with this virus worldwide with millions of deaths. And I say that we can do better. We have to. The article said, we have a long and sorrowful way to go. So we had better respond wisely. And the best response is to do what has been voiced by the health officials. Until an effective vaccine is developed and becomes widely available, we need to minimize our social interactions, keep our physical distance, implement widespread testing, and yes, wear masks. So that's a kind of dire prediction. So I'm going to repeat what they said because I thought this was fascinating around testing. A thin cotton swab shoved up your nostril beats a thick plastic tube jammed down your trachea. And for people who resist face masks, they should realize that face masks beat closing the economy or counting body bags. So as you spend your holiday weekend and for any upcoming celebrations you know we've been through the spring we've been through the summer and now we're heading into the fall and we still have a raging pandemic and the scientists these people who knew what they're talking about the experts are really sounding the alarm wearing a mask shouldn't be political it should be about saving our lives, our own, and the people around us. We can't back down now. There may not be coverage on the news of all the dying. You're hearing a political propaganda message. They're saying the deaths are decreasing. Well, as long as the cases are increasing, the deaths will too. Now, lately we have seen a turn in the people who get this infection. It's young people. And young people aren't dying like the older people were. But they're having complications. And many of them are going to be sick and impaired for the remainder of their lives because we just don't know what this virus can do. Remember, COVID-19 is more of a blood vessel virus. It's not just a respiratory virus. The lungs are one organ, the heart, the kidneys, the gastrointestinal tract, the skin, the brain. These are other organs 
that are infected, affected by this virus. So this is Dr. Rhonda Johnson. My views are my own. Stay the course, folks. Keep washing your hands, keep wearing your mask, and keep your distance. And have a blessed day.